Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Good Morning Preschool. I'm Miss Cindy, and I'm so glad you joined me today. I'd like to say a special happy birthday to my friend Sienna. Hi, Sienna. Sienna is four years old today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy, happy, happy birthday. And to anybody else out there who's having a birthday, I hope you have a wonderful day, too. Let's sing our good morning song today. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with smiles on our faces. And this is the way to start a new day. Good morning. How about we count up to 20 today? That's our big number on our number chart today. Two and a zero is 20. Let's start at number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty is a very big number. And today I have 20 ducks because we're going to be talking about life at the pond. So there's a duck. And I also have some frogs. I have 20 frogs. 20 is a very big number. We also have a letter today, a new letter. Do you remember what our letter was last time? It's the letter Q. What comes after the letter Q? Hmm, think about that for a minute while I get the chart down. Come on, Miss Duck. Here's my chart. The letter Q is here. What comes after Q? R. The letter R. So let's do our alphabet together. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? And the letter R is kind of a hard one to make. R. It makes this sound. R, R, R. You kind of have to put your lips together. R, R. So there's the uppercase R. Where's the lowercase R? Oh, it's hiding in the pocket. There's the lowercase R. It makes the sound R, 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 like rabbit and race car. R, r, r. So let's put our skywriters in the sky. We'll make an R. It goes down, around, and down. That's the uppercase R. The lowercase R is a little line, and then a little up and around. That's the lowercase R. So in our R bag today, oh, I have a color. What color begins the letter R? R, r. Red. Red begins the letter R. And I also have a rocking chair. <clears throat> rocking chair begins with the letter R. R, R, rocking chair. And I have a rabbit. Hello, rabbit. He's a little rabbit. Hello, rabbit. Rabbit begins with the R, letter R. And here's rice. I like to eat rice. Rice begins with the letter R. And a ring. Or a ring. Some people wear rings on their fingers. Ring begins with the letter R. So try to make that sound. R. 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 For some people, it's a hard sound to make, but we just have to keep practicing it. R. R. The letter R makes the sound R. Now, I thought we would go on a little field trip to the pond. The pond is a wonderful place. There's all kinds of things that live in the pond. So let's go up to the pond that's down the street from my house. This is our pond at Southford Falls. The pond is a beautiful place to come and visit. And there's a family of geese with baby goslings. There's lily pads and water, people fishing, all kinds of wonderful things live in a pond. Today we're at the pond. I thought we'd come and see if we could find some tadpoles, but it's been so cold around my house lately that I don't see any. 
a pond is a fantastic place to go see all kinds of different life forms. A pond is like its own little ecosystem. It's like its own little world. There's amphibians here, and there's reptiles, and there's geese, and there's ducks, and there's all kinds of cool things to see. I wonder if you have a pond near your house that you can go and look at. I was going to scoop up some pond water and put it in my special bucket here. It's got a magnifying glass on the top. Pond water is full of all kinds of wonderful organisms and amoebas and bacteria. All kinds of life. Some kinds of life that's so small that you can't see it without a microscope. So here's some pond water. What does it look like? <laughs> Looks pretty muddy, doesn't it? But when it settles, all that mud and stuff will settle on the bottom, and we might see some little things that swim around by the time I get back to my house. So we'll leave that in there. And I'll see if we can find anything else. Let's see if we can look. So there's mud and there's leaves. There's all kinds of things in the water. Sometimes you see little bubbles popping up, which might mean that there's a frog down there. And there was a great blue heron that just flew by. It's really a wonderful place to visit. Even though I couldn't find any tadpole eggs, I did find a frog. Hello, Bubba. You're a big guy. Say hi. Yeah. He's just sitting on shore. So there must be tadpoles out there someplace. Look. You have all this room to play. Yeah, I'll let you go. Jump. Off he goes. Oh, he's just going to sit here. All right. Sit in the sun. Frogs are amphibians. They breathe through their skin. They're pretty neat. They lay their eggs in the water, and then their eggs hatch into tadpoles. And then when the tadpoles grow their legs, they crawl up onto land, but they live in the water. But they can come and go as they please. Pretty neat. So inside the jar of pond water I brought is actually a pond snail. He's hard to see, but he's crawling around on the inside of my jar. See how the mud has settled down so it's not as murky as it was before. But there's all kinds of things inside there. Things that we really can't see with our own eyes. I wish I had a microscope. A microscope makes little things look bigger when you look through the hole. There's fascinating things in that pond water. And there's our little pond snail crawling around on the inside. Pretty neat. So I have a story called Tale of a Tadpole by Karen Wallace. And it's all about how a tadpole goes into a frog. Let's go around this way. The tale of a tadpole begins in a pond. Mother frog lays her eggs next to a lily pad. Each tiny egg is wrapped in clear jelly. And that's exactly what it looks like. You can reach down and scoop up big bunches of those little round jelly balls with little tiny tadpoles inside. Inside the jelly, the eggs grow into tadpoles. They wiggle like worms. They push through the jelly and swim in the water, and they breathe through their gills just like fishes. See down here? That's what they grow into. Doesn't quite look like a frog yet. Soon the tadpole grows legs with tiny webbed toes. Webbed toes are like flippers. They help the small tadpole push through the water. Sort of looks like a frog. But he's still living in the water. He grows arms with long skinny fingers, and he nibbles on plants and gobbles green pond weed. All those things make him big and strong. Half tadpole, half frog, he rests in the sunshine. His tail is shrinking. It gets smaller and smaller. Now he's really looking like a frog. The new little frog sits on a lily pad. His legs are strong now. He can breathe through his nostrils. His skin is dotted with tiny gold spots. Nostrils are his nose. Frogs must keep their skin slimy. 
He hops back in the pond and swims for a while, and then he climbs on a log. Another frog climbs up and sits down next to him. And they're very slimy. <laughs> the golden-skinned frog chases a dragonfly. It lands on a lily pad. Under the lily pad are hundreds of frog's eggs. Inside each egg, a tadpole is growing. Each tadpole will grow into a golden-skinned frog. They are amazing. Well, I wish I could have found some down at the pond today, but I didn't. Maybe next time. I wonder if you have a pond near you. Maybe you can go look for some frogs or some tadpoles. Some people like to call them polywogs. I like that word. But ponds are a wonderful place where God has put so many different kinds of creatures for us to learn about and enjoy. So go visit your pond today. It's a fun thing to do. I thought we'd do some patterns today with some ducks and some frogs, both things that you can find at a pond. So here's our duck and here's our frog. And we'll start with a really easy one. Duck, frog, duck, frog, duck. What comes next? Frog, that's right. And then what comes after that? Duck, good job. So let's do that together. Duck, frog, duck, frog, duck, frog, duck. Good job. Now let's try a little harder one. Just a little harder. Duck, duck, frog, duck, duck, frog. What comes next? That's right. Duck. Then what? Duck. That's right. And frog. So let's do that one together. Duck, duck, frog, duck, duck, frog, duck, duck, frog. Kind of has a rhythm to it, doesn't it? All right, let's do a different one. Let's start with a frog. Frog, duck, duck. Frog, duck, duck. What comes next? Right, frog, then what? Duck, duck. Good job. Let's do that together. Frog, duck, duck. Frog, duck, duck. Frog, duck, duck. Good job. All right, how about a hard one? All right, let's see if we can do a hard one. Frog, duck, frog, frog. Oh my goodness. Frog, duck, frog, frog. Okay, what comes next? That's right, frog, then what? Duck, that's right, then frog. Frog. So let's do that one together. Frog, duck, frog, 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 duck, frog, frog, the frog, duck, frog, frog. That's a yellow frog. Hello. Cool. Good job. Now how about we do one more really easy one. Frog, 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 duck. Frog, 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 Duck, what comes next? That's right, frog. Frog, frog, and then a duck. Good, let's do that one together. Frog, 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 duck. Frog, 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 duck. Frog, 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 duck. Good job, you guys are getting really good at doing patterns. Something fun you can make if you're going to the pond to look for really neat things under the water is a little scope. Now a scope is something you use so that you put in the water and you can see down deeper than your eyes could see. So if you have a water bottle or even a soda bottle, a two liter bottle, you cut the top off, you cut the bottom off, and that leaves you with a tube. And then you get a piece of saran wrap or cling film, put that on the bottom, and then put a rubber band around that, pull it up pretty high. And then you take your little scope, which looks like that, and you put it into the water and you can look right down through the scope and it pushes the water aside and you can see what's down deeper. So you might see tadpoles or polywogs, maybe a turtle, some all kinds of different things that live underneath the water where your eyes could not normally see. So if you're going to the pond, make yourself a little scope. Very easy to make. I also have one of my favorite stories to read to you today. It's called The Wide Mouth Frog, and it's a pop-up book. 
by Keith Faulkner and illustrated by Jonathan Lambert. The wide mouth. Oh, there he is. The wide mouth frog. I am a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog, shooting out his long sticky tongue. There's the fly on his sticky tongue. As he hopped along, he met a blue feathered bird. I am a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, bird? I eat wiggly worms and slugs, replied the bird, snapping his pointy beak. Pretty long beak, too, isn't it? <clears throat> Next, the wide mouth frog met a furry brown mouse. I am a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, mouse? I eat crunchy seeds and juicy berries, replied the mouse, wiggling her whiskers. He's got a long nose, too. <laughs> Whoa. The wide mouth frog was still catching flies when he saw a big green alligator. I am a wide mouth frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouth frog. What do you eat, alligator? I eat delicious wide mouth frogs, replied the alligator, showing his sharp teeth. Look at those teeth. Oh, the wide mouth frog stopped catching flies and gulped. Then he puckered up his lips and made his mouth as small as possible. Oh, you don't see many of those around here, do ya? He said, and he leaped into the pond with a big splash. Pretty neat. That is the wide mouth frog. What a silly book. I thought we'd sing the five little speckled frogs today. Do you know that song? Let's sing it together. Five little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating the most delicious lunch blog blog. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there's only four speckled frogs. and cool. So let's sing our goodbye song. Well, goodbye my friends, goodbye. Goodbye my friends, goodbye. We sang and we played and we had a great day. Goodbye my friends, goodbye. Go visit the pond today if you have one near your house and look for frogs and salamanders and all kinds of cool things that God put there for us to learn about. See you next time.